What's up, Mr. Guns fans? Today, you're going to get to see us do three gun. Not the three gun you're thinking of, but three guns that are incredibly popular right now. We're going to do the Springfield Armory Hellcat, the P365, and the Shield Plus. Do a little bit of a compare and contrast and let you know what we think. America! As you can see, here are the three guns in a side-by-side-by-side -side -by -side configuration. Each of these guns has its longer magazine in place, as you can see. Just in case you don't know when you're watching the video, this one is the P365, this one is the Shield Plus, and then this one is the Hellcat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do some comparison and contrast. So the specifications on these show the, the overall length on these guns. It's 5.8 inches on the P365. It's six inches on the Springfield Hellcat. And then the overall length on the Shield Plus is going to be, I'm looking on my sheet here, 6.1. So let's do a quick comparison looking at it and see if that physically makes sense. So the P365 is supposed to be the shortest at 5.8 inches versus the Hellcat at six. So let's line them up back to back there and see if that looks like it is the case. And it is, you can see it's ever so slightly longer there on the Hellcat. And then as we move on to the Shield Plus versus the Hellcat, we should expect a slightly longer gun. And that is in fact what we get there because as mentioned, this specification is 6.1. Now, a lot of times the barrel length overall is not, or the, the overall length is not really going to make a lot of difference in a concealed carry gun because it is, uh, you know, this is going down into the pants. One important thing is the thickness. The thickness is really important. So I don't really see a lot of specifications on the websites on the, the actual thickness across the top. We do see grip thickness uh, mentioned on the Hellcat is supposed to be one inch. Uh, I don't see a grip thickness on the specifications of the P365 and the grip thickness is not much. There's not a specification on the Smith website either for the Shield Plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a fast measurement here across the top of each gun itself. So this one is about, uh, it's a little hard to perfectly line it up there, but you can see that it's about seven eighths inches thick on the top of the Shield Plus. This one is about, uh, I'll call it three quarters, maybe uh, seven sixteenths there, or, well, no, that would be, what? I can't do my math in my head. Ten sixteenths, something like that. Uh, three quarters is nine sixteenths, right? So one more sixteenth would be ten sixteenths. And then we've got here uh right at three quarters so it appears that by an ever slight margin we have uh that the p365 is in fact the thinnest and the thickest is going to be the shield again these are just marginal thicknesses and then of course we were just measuring th slide thickness so if you look at the overall thickness uh it appears just physically looking with my eyes that perhaps this Springfield gun is slightly thicker as the frame pokes out. But again, we're talking moderate, almost nothing differences there. You can sort of line them up and see the differences in the length as we look at them from that perspective. The height itself 
is going to be, according to specification, on the P365, the height is 4.3 inches top to bottom. Of course, that's going to be magazine dependent. The height on the Hellcat is, let me look at that really quickly, four inches with the flush mag or four and a half according to specification uh, with the extended magazine. And then I don't really see much of a height measurement on the Smith. So what we're going to do is, again, we'll put a tape to it and see how accurate they are. They're right. That one is four and a half inches. Sorry, we're slightly out of frame there on the Hellcat. We'll bring in the Smith. We're just over five inches with the extended magazine. And then we are at four and a half with the P365. The weight on these guns is 17.8 ounces on the P365. The weight on the Hellcat is 18.3, and the weight on the Shield is 20. Uh, 20.2 20 to be exact, according to the website. Now, I haven't put these on a scale loaded. Obviously, loaded weight is going to be slightly different. But according to all the specs, basically the winner, if we determine winning by being small, winning is the SIG gun, it is the lightest, smallest, shortest gun. Now, again, all of these are very small guns and make adequate carry guns. Now, it's really hard to dictate which trigger is better because you have to go on feel. The weights are all pretty similar. I don't have a trigger gauge. I probably should have one. But to me, the way that the triggers feel ranks number one is going to be with the shield plus it is very crisp again we've already checked this for safe but i'm just showing you guys before i pull triggers it's very crisp it comes back here and hits a wall and then and goes bang there's no creep in the trigger at all this gun again it's clear we're checking it this one kind of has a similar feeling trigger, but it does have a little more creep in it whenever you pull and it feels softer. Now, by far the mushiest feeling trigger is going to be on this P365, which is, again, it's safe. We can look and tell, but it is the mushiest trigger of all. It just feels sloppy. Now, I have fired all of these guns, and I can tell you uh, that you don't notice that mushiness in the trigger when you're actually shooting. Overall, in my hands, my hands are reasonably large. If we feel the grip on this one, this one feels physically largest. It is long from front to back versus the Hellcat. You can notice back to front is slightly shorter of a grip. And then probably the smallest, we can compare these two guys together. But they're pretty similar as far as grip thickness goes. Um, but maybe the P365 is a slight winner on grip backwards and forwards. Again, I thought I was not going to like that. I said, well, you know, this thing is small. So you can kind of see how they line up in a larger male hand here. That's kind of how they fit. And then this is the largest grip. I do find them all to be pretty comfortable. The safeties, or I'm sorry, the magazine releases on these are all pretty similar as far as the ergonomics go. And then of course we have slide catches and things like that. Uh, the slide catch was very, very stiff on the, the Shield Plus compared to the other guns, but I think that that is going to wear down over time. I do like the way pretty much all of them feel. Now we can kind of talk about the sights between the guns. The SIG has these small uh, night sights on here. Uh, you can see those. They're, they're smaller. It does have the front sight with the green surround. If we compare that to the 
Hellcat, you notice that the yellow surround on the Hellcat is larger, or at least appears to be so, and there are no night sights in the rear. And then we also have the Smith, uh, which has the white dot sights, and that is it. There's no night sights. Now, all of these guns come in different variants. They have uh, guns that have RMR cuts on top and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, you have the XL version of the P365. So there's variations on these guns that these links and things are going to change. I'm just pretty much talking about the base model of the gun uh, that most people are going to carry uh, or that's you know kind of the base configuration that's the least expensive. If I had to pick a winner of the sights myself, I like the P365 sights the best, but that is my preference. I enjoy the small night sights. I feel like I can hit a lot better with them. The gun itself uh, on the Hellcat, I do not prefer these larger front sights and I don't like these loop back sights. Now, that is just me. Somebody else may run this gun and say, that's the greatest sight ever. It may be super easy for them. And then, of course, these are just standard white sights, which are fine with me. Uh, I don't mind shooting a standard white sight, but I don't feel like you get any bonus for having, uh, you know, the gun uh, in the configuration that it's in like you would getting night sights. One matter to discuss here is going to be price. The Hellcat itself is the cheapest option for the standard model. The standard black model of the Hellcat runs about $4.99. The uh, P365 is about $550, and then the Shield Plus is about $529. Now, that is in the 2021 market. Things are a little bit more elevated. I would expect as time passes, that we are going to see prices come down on, on some, if not all of these. I know that we had the P365s for sale in our store for less than that prior to the COVID pandemic. So at this moment in time, the manufacturers are not offering any incentives or discounts for the dealers, which obviously uh, you know, doesn't allow the dealers to pass on any savings to the consumer. So all of them are kind of pretty close to each other within about 50 bucks. Okay, let's talk magazines now. You'll notice on the right, the P365 has those two magazines. Those are not examples of the typical magazines that come with the P365. Normally the P365 comes with two 10 round magazines. The ones that you're looking at there are the 12 round magazines that come in the tack pack. Now, the TAC Pack comes with three 12 round magazines and a holster. I won't go into a lot of details about the TAC Pack. What the TAC Pack is effectively is for SIG dealers that sell a lot of their guns. It's kind of a somewhat limited edition package that comes with the extra magazine and the holster. You can watch another video that we have about the TAC Pack. It's the best way to buy this gun, in my opinion. Second, we have the Shield Plus. It comes with one 10 round magazine and then one 13 round magazine. The 10 round is flush and the 13 round is extended. I do feel like the 13 round is more comfortable. The Hellcat has a little bit more of a variation. Typically, it will ship with a 10 round and then also with the 13 round. I'm sorry, it ships with an 11 round and a 13 round. The 11 round is the one with this slight pinky extension. It also comes with this base plate. All of the guns come in a cardboard box. Uh, actually, the P365 comes in a plastic case, but the other two guns come in a cardboard box. One feature that you get with the Hellcat that you don't get with the other guns is that it comes with this little soft pack and it has a speed loader. You can watch our Hellcat specific videos. As a matter of fact, we have specific videos for every one of these guns. And you can see in real detail of what comes in the box and what it looks like. So to me, the winner here is the Hellcat because it does come with the variations in the magazines. 
uh, whereas the P365 has the lightest offering only coming with the two 10 rounders. I don't like the feeling of the P365 with the 10 round magazines. So there you have the kind of side-by-side -side breakdown on the different guns. There's also a Ruger Max 4 and a Taurus GX4. The GX4 was just released, so we don't really have that to show. We'll probably do another video on that soon. And then the Ruger Max 9 uh, is another one that we're just not seeing a lot of right now. It hasn't been out very long. I guess the inevitable question is going to be, which gun should I buy? Well, the answer to that is going to be whichever one is right for you. I ended up actually enjoying the P365 so much that I bought it for myself. If you look uh, on our page, you'll see that, or on our uh, video feed, you will see that we have in-depth videos on each of these guns. So please check that out too. Regardless of which one you pick, you really can't go wrong. So guys, thanks for watching the video. As I always say, the gun world is a family. You guys be nice to each other. Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, check out our website. And if you're ever in North Texas, come and see us. Till next time, y'all take it easy.